I feel like it's very important as men for us to be able to understand what a healthy male archetype looks like. What does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a husband? And I feel like a lot of the influence which we see uh, sort of in the background for that archetype is kind of influenced by Stoicism. Uh, of course, there's there's the whole notion, the term Stoicism comes from the Greek philosophical sect, but I feel like, you know, it, it's very prevalent in the East also just by a different name. Like Confucianism, I feel like also is, is very Stoic in its nature in a lot of ways. If you just look at kind of like uh, the, the ways in which a lot of Eastern men, like like Chinese and, and Japanese in particular, kind of meant to be very stoic and, and not really express their emotions like towards their women and even towards their children. And in many instances, public displays of, of affection in Eastern cultures are, are less prevalent. Um, you know, there's this idea that, that there's like an association between masculinity and uh, emotional reserve. And I, I find it fascinating that when you study Jupiter, which is the sign in a woman's chart which designates the husband, um, you actually seem to find something which is expressing the opposite. And what I mean by that is the fact that Jupiter is actually exalted in Cancer. This I find particularly fascinating because Cancer is the sign of the mother. It's the sign of the home. It's the sign of emotional care and nourishment and sentimentality and family in many ways as well. And so here you see that the husband is actually exalted in this very mothering, nurturing sign. And I feel like it's profoundly significant to explore this and understand this dynamic as a man and as a husband, as well as uh, as a woman who is looking to be able to have the discernment and clarity to be able to choose a proper husband and a good man. And, you know, what, what this indicates is that the ideal husband is not someone who is overly Capricornian, you know, overly stoic and reserved and hard and distant. You know, he's not like a Saturn archetype in the sense that it's like cold and dry emotionally. He's not a Mars archetype in that he's aggressive and angry towards his woman or dominating her through force. All of those, those elements like our aggression and our Saturnian characteristics have their place within us in a particular context. And that's a discussion that I'm looking forward to in another video. Uh, but in the case of what it means to fundamentally like be a husband and to fulfill that role, it's actually one of emotional care and nourishment. And I feel like this is further illustrated by the fact that women very, very deeply need emotional care and love from their husbands. If you look at sort of like the female fantasy, uh, female romantic notions and storytelling uh, in the hearts of, of many women, sort of like the archetypal woman in many ways, sort of like the maiden dynamic and the maiden mother crone archetype, um, triple goddess. You, know, you have this idea of like the knight in shining armor, of the prince charming, of of someone who is um, emotionally available and nourishing, as well as uh, you know handsome and charismatic and courageous and brave and and skillful and competent. And so you know, emo uh, women have a deep need for emotional care and love. Like if you ask most women, like what is the most important thing for you to to be married to a man they'll probably say love and also provi providing being provided for is right up there as well is really really close so those are like two of the the main things i would say is like love emotional care and support as well as being provided for that is very very important to women now of course there are other things as well in addition to this but i feel like this is deeply at the core of their needs as women and so, you know, I feel like this stoic perspective of the masculine husband archetype, like if you look at like the 1950s, if you look at a lot of like the sort of Chinese Confucian values, uh, you know, even like many Islamic values where you just have kind of like very stoic men, women who are just kind of like in many ways in their place, whether they like it or not, you know, you have this very kind of cold and dry Saturnian contractual sometimes forced sort of dynamic. 
And that's not what makes women happy. And I think that that's a big part of why we've had such a pushback in Western society with like the feminist movement, which in many ways is very much the antithesis to the 1950s kind of, you know, archetypal husband dynamic where it comes home and the woman just has to, you know, serve him no matter how she's feeling. And, you know, they were like very derogatory towards women and, and just like very much just treated them as, as second class citizens. And it was not a very good dynamic. Like spent some time studying, uh, reading like 1950s magazines about how they were portraying two women, how to behave and how to view marriage. And it's honestly sickening in an almost laughable way. And it would be funny if it wasn't like so bad and had caused so much suffering. Just like how um, ostentatiously ridiculous the portrayal of how a woman is supposed to act is, you know, just like kind of like having a smile, like no matter how bad she felt inside and she's not supposed to bother her man with her problems or emotions. And, She's always supposed to cook no matter what. It's just like, you know, like, like they took the, the natural roles that a woman has sort of in a traditional gender role dynamic and made them very forced and kind of enslaved her to them and then caused this pushback where they kind of rebelled against the whole thing and sort of did this throwing the baby out with the bathwater thing. And so I think that one of the ways to help bridge this gap and, and get back to being able to nourish each other and understand each other is for us as men to understand really what caused that initial deviation and caused the rebellion in the first place, which had to do with men um, lacking emotional care and support for their women, um, lacking understanding for their women, and then being too Capricornian in nature when it comes to the relationship. And so, you know, we can talk about here what Jupiter in Cancer indicates for sort of like an ideal husband. And one of the things is emotional sentimentality, you know, and that's something that I think men have to to relearn a little bit and and to be viewed in a proper context. Because even nowadays, like when you do see men who are sort of like emotionally attached and, and sentimental, like it can sometimes be perceived as a negative thing, even by women. But like, oh, this person is like a simp is one term, you know, it's just like, or this person's too emotionally, whatever. And it's like, well, you need a man to be emotional so that he bonds to you. All right. Um, and at the same time, he still has to be able to fulfill his masculine role. But then, you know, with like cancer is a very emotionally sentimental sign. Like if you have someone who has moon and cancer, generally speaking, um, they're going to be someone who's very emotionally attached and connected to the people they fall in love with. It's their family, their children, their romantic partners, their friends, even, they're going to like love a person and then take them into their heart forever and kind of have a little sacred place in there. And even if that person kind of hurts them, generally speaking, they'll still have that sacred place. Even if they have to distance themselves from that person physically, there'll be this sort of like love for them that they have in the heart always. Um, And so that's kind of an indication of what women are looking for from men is a level of sentimentality. You know, and I think that if you look at like the modern dating scene and how men are just kind of, in many instances, willing to like go date from person to person to person to person without feeling any emotional type of attachment to where they're just like, oh, like this is just another chick. It's like you're not actually having an emotional connection with that person to where you're like seeing them like this is, you know, say this person's name and you, you're you viewing them as an individual, you're loving them as a, on a soul level, it's like it's this specific person, not just the fact that she is a girl or a woman that is the sort of like primary factor. And so like that is um, very, very essential, I think, toward for like a woman's romantic ideology is to be specifically connected to and chosen. And, and even if you're talking about like polygamy, because the monogamy, that's obvious, and polyamory, that's something where people are avoiding making those type of long-term attachments. Even if they still love someone and, and are connected to them in some way, they're willing to like let that person go in a lot of respects. Um, so with like polygamy, even so, you're still like specially connected with that person in the sense that even if you have multiple wives as a man, you are going to be caring for them and loving them and, and providing a home for them for the rest of their entire lives for their entire lives and you're not going to abandon them you're not going to you know just choose someone younger and walk away it's like they have a home with you it's jupiter and cancer they have a home with you in your heart you you know you care for them in this way like you know kind of like how a mother cares for children it's like you keep them and you're like i you are precious to me 
and I'm going to keep you safe. I'm going to protect you and I'm going to nurture you. And so it's really fascinating to me that that is what the sign of the husband, the planet of the husband is saying that women need is actually a very mothering relationship from their husband. Nurturing relationship from their husband. Now, of course, this is in addition to the fact that men provide and men have masculine energy so they can protect, they can be assertive in terms of like knowing where they want to go in life and having the will to, to self-initiate and to be motivated and to accomplish things. So we have those dynamics, right? And then when it comes to how we're interacting with the woman and with our wife, we're not meant to like say, take that Martian energy, which we're using to drive our physical activities and direct it at her and be, be mean or be aggressive or be violent. That's not how, that's a misappropriation of that energy. The energy we're meant to express in relationship to the wife is one of nurturing care, mothering in a, in a lot of ways. You know, like if your woman is sad, for example, is what I mean by mothering. Like when a woman is sad, you're meant to like kind of set down what you're doing, pay attention to her and be like, okay, let me, let me take care of you. What do you need? Can I get you, can I get you some dinner, maybe a massage? You know, let me, let's talk about what's on your mind, what's on your heart right now. Let me help you to feel emotionally supported. And, and that has to do with attention, focused attention, where you're not just like thinking about the football game or whatever else is in the background of your brain. It's like you, your whole consciousness is now focused on caring for this woman. Um, and that's what she needs. And you see that like if, if a child is crying, like how a woman treats that child, treat your wife that way. That's not to say like the, to be belittling. I'm not saying do that, but you're meant to be um, caring and provide this home space emotionally for the woman so she can melt and be her complete feminine self. So cancer rules the fourth house and that's the house of the home, the physical home space. So the, the way that your home feels uh, and, you know, notice that throughout much of human history, men providing homes for women has been a, a very consistent fundamental element of the, of the dynamic. You know, a woman will leave her home with her parents and move in with the male. The male will either build her a house or buy her a house or provide a home in some way. Now the woman, of course, she, she kind of makes that house a home. But the, male, the man providing a, a house for her, a safe space, is both a physical thing as well as an emotional thing. You know, the, the physical home that's provided is also a significator of the emotional safe space that you provide as a man. So I feel like the more you study cancer energy and the more you study Jupiter energy, you really understand how to behave as a husband to be really the best husband you can be. And that allows her to be the best wife that she can be. And it's by fulfilling our role to the very best of our ability with integrity from a very genuine place without making these um, like mistakes, especially chronic mistakes, that allows the woman's trust to build and allows her to be her best self. And it's just like, that's why Jupiter represents the husband because it's the planet of literally pure integrity. It's the sattvic planet. So you're not meant to, as a man to do anything which ever betrays trust. Like you, you have to be loyal. You have to be honest. Now, if you're a man who needs multiple women, you have to say that from the very beginning, right? If you're polyamorous, you shouldn't be getting married. If you're polygamous, she has to know before she ever starts basically dating you and then choose whether or not she wants to be in that dynamic or not. And if you're monogamous, then you have to always adhere to the contract which you two have formed together. And that's like a relationship and a contract that you have with her. But see, contracts also has to do with the seventh house. It has to do with Saturn. So well, why is it Jupiter instead of just Saturn? Why is it not just the dry letter of the law contract? And I think one of the reasons for why husband is Jupiter is because it's also it's a relationship between the man and God. No, it's a divine contract that he you're that as a man you're making not only with this woman but you're also making this with God simultaneously whether you know it or not and so taking care of women is is a sort of holy sacred activity which um, you know is it, something that has a lot of karmic effect on 
men uh, when you don't adhere to that and when you don't respect the divine law that comes with taking care of women. So this is definitely something to keep in mind. And I think that also you know, Jupiter being the great benefic shows like how much blessings like God can provide and like the divine and heaven can provide to a man who truly lives up to these heavenly principles, who truly does take care of a woman and he's loyal to her even when she doesn't know like what he's doing because God knows, heaven knows, your karma knows when you pass away on your deathbed and you know, like the whole spirit world knows everything that you did. There's no hiding or getting away with anything. And so just living by the principles which you espouse is truly key. And so as a man, like look to the position of your Jupiter to get an understanding of like the type of husband which you kind of naturally are. And then like the, your style, like the sign that Jupiter is in and the house that Jupiter is in is really going to give you a flavor of... Uh, what kind of archetype you'll naturally fall into as a, as a man with your Jupiter, as a husband, I should say. Um, and women, you can also look to your husband's Jupiter's to kind of see how he's able to fulfill that role. You know, if his Jupiter is very heavily afflicted, it's going to be very difficult for him to really step into that role and fulfill it with integrity. Whereas, you know, if his Jupiter is, is in a very good position, you know, very good, very good dignity, then he's going to much more easily be able to align with those heavenly principles and to, to portray that heavenly male archetype this is of course just one element in the chart which shows that you also have to look at the sun and you know mars to some extent too there's so many things that go into a relationship the entire chart really but but that level of like, truly like divine heavenly alignment with that divine law that is really something seen so much from jupiter it shows the integrity of a person in general and so yeah i mean what better way to express what a healthy male archetype means in a word than integrity. Integrity. And really just consistently doing that and never breaking it once. And if you do that, miracles happen in relationships. Love happens in relationships where the woman still has stars in her eyes for you even when you're like 60 and 70 years old and she's just like adores you and submits to you and respects you because you have always kept her sacred trust. Always. Even when opportunities and temptations present themselves, you are constantly in alignment with divine law. That is really, I think, what breeds um, the most benevolent divine loves and romances. So thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I hope that it's insightful and helpful and, and contributes to the healing of men and women and our gender roles and our relationships and i look forward to speaking more to you on these profound topics talk to you soon